So what's the future of Vibe Magazine? Like my friend Jeff Chang says, can't stop, won't stop. Like it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, man, you gotta understand, I was here almost from the beginning. So for me to see Vibe 15 years later doing as well as it's doing right now, even in this crazy era in magazine publishing where things are changing all the time and for there to be Vibe and Vibe.com and whatever else we got going on upstairs, Vibe TV and Vibe at your mama's house, just Vibe, Vibe, Vibe. When I think about the future, I just think, once again, like, how can we just double up? How can we make it even better? How can we be even more excellent? How can we be even more beautiful, more smart, more on point, more timely, just more dramatic, more everything, just to give our readers so that every time they open a vibe, it's an event. It's like a party they're invited to and all their friends are there. All the people they want to be their friends are there. All the news is there, all the music coverage, all the movie coverage, all the sports coverage. We're trying to give you everything. It's like the best party out there. I don't understand if you're not coming, then you're sleeping. Oh, that's real talk, but hold up. <laughs> Since you're behind the scenes and running this thing, mm -hmm. give me a good story of a cover shoot that you think of when I first asked you that question on Vibe. Okay, when you came into my office, what did I put on? Because I wanted to get revved up for this jamming interview. That Beyonce. Yeah, it was Beyonce, Bring the Alarm. That's my, that's my, well, it's not really my girl, but I mean, I love that song. And, <laughs> okay. and I admire Beyonce when, um, as an artist. But my whole point is, when we did the Beyonce cover last, I think it was July. I mean, you would just think that, oh my God, it's Beyonce Knowles. It's going to be the highest of drama. It's going to be insane. Um, it turned out there was a huge um, snowstorm, so maybe this wasn't last night, maybe it was last June. Um, we had like four feet of snow on the ground. Planes were not landing. We were all set up, ready to go. Oh, look, it's starting to snow right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it was crazy. Beyonce, when I got there, first of all, Beyonce was still on time. She flew into some airport like above us and drove down to New York. She got there, her hair was fly, the body, I will say, I'm not even. <laughs> she gave the. Yeah, I just okay. really, I mean, the girl doesn't have to work at it. She was so pleasant, so down for whatever, so into the photographer. And we were all like, why did we think this one was going to be drama? I mean, it was just incredible. She was all in the shower, getting wet, smiling, being sexy. I mean, it was just, it was just, it was just a great experience. And it's funny. Some people who you would think are going to be drama, they're the, usually the ones drama free. The ones who just feel like, oh, this is going to be a breeze. This person's going to come in here, get in front of the camera. It's all going to be beautiful. It's like, the hell? Really? Give me, give yes. me a drama story. People and their writers. And I don't mean writers, W-R-I-T-E-R-S. I mean R-I-D-E-R-S. And just the things that they must have. Oh, I can't have these kind of grapes. I have to have those kind of grapes. Oh, I can't have these kind of candles. I must have these kind of candles. I mean, some of it I understand. People are celebrities. It's wonderful. Great. You're famous. But it's like, come on now. We're just trying to get this done. Let's make this look beautiful. The Keisha Cole photo shoot, I wasn't there. It was down in Miami, I think. But the people from Vibe that went said Keisha was a dream. Really? They said she was an absolute dream. And you know, Keisha can go there. I know she can. <laughs> Keisha can take it. I'm from Oakland, too. Keisha can take it straight back to Oakland at any moment. But, um... I don't know, everybody said that she was just there and she was chill and everybody had a great time with her. Everybody said, we didn't know Kishiko was that small. She's really a very she tiny, yeah, she's very tiny. Um, but everybody just said she was just so like strong and polite and gracious and charming and obviously quite stunning. And I see that it worked. Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, you know, do we have our nightmare stories? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Do I want to tell them to all y'all? No. I tried. Give me credit, everybody. I tried to dig it in. But right now, a lot of people watching here would love to be an editor-chief of a magazine or write novels or work for time. What advice would you give to someone who wants to get into the whole writing game? There was a time when I would have said, um, oh, go work for a newspaper for a while, um, get an internship at an alternative news weekly, et cetera, et cetera. Right here in 2008, I say what you need to do is definitely get an internship at, at, a, at a publication or at a site. Um, I think you should start a blog, definitely. I think you should get your friends involved in that. I think you should not just make your blog, hi, I'm home, chilling, and I'm going to feed the dog now, and yawn, okay? You should get focused. If you want to be a journalist, if you want to be a web journalist, a print journalist, if you want to be an author, if you want to be an editor, you should really think about your blog and what you would like it to do and who you would like to appeal to and go there with it and try to get people involved with it. Send your links around, like start a community. I think that's really important. Um, 
And other than that, I just think you have to work hard. Mm. I think you have to be focused. I think you have to take words seriously. I think you have to, and not to sound like old and like somebody's, I don't know, <laughs> writing teacher, which I have been, okay. but I really think you have to learn the rules before you can break them. Um, I think that you should remember that a sentence is a sentence for a reason. Um, I think you should read everything possible. I think you should read magazines across the board, not just in, not just in the niche area that you're into. Like if you're just into reggae, don't just read reggae magazines. If you just like read everything, read everything from town and country to vibe to GQ to wax poetic. So just like read everything, you know what I mean? Um, and see what people are doing, see how people are being creative and then just work. And when people tell you that you're not good or you're not ready or whatever, you take, you take, you take, you take 51% of that and wow. you check yourself and you say, okay, this person knows more than me. I respect this person. This person says I'm not ready. I'm going to take 51% of that and I'm going to learn from it. But I'm not taking the other 49%. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do me. Some part of this is just me doing me. Mm. Maybe there's some, and you know, I mean, be strong about what you believe. As an early editor told me too, no one cares what you kind of think. And he said it with curse words in it. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> That's so <laughs> real. Guys. But, yeah. but nobody cares what you kind of think. Nobody cares what you kind of think. They just don't. Wow. Yeah. She just dropped some jewels on you right there. And before I let you go, let me go back to, mm -hmm. you told before about being married. Oh yeah. And to a gentleman that we all know and a friend of the show, Mr. Elliot Wilson. Is he a friend of the show? Oh yeah, he's a friend oh, of the show. Oh, okay. That's good. So tell me, uh -huh. how did that happen? Why do what happen? Two writers, opinionated people, oh. know what they want and do, get together oh, and have man. a successful relationship. Tell oh, me, man. you're in that Jay Beyonce, <laughs> that Nelly Lane, yeah. that that. Tell me, yeah. how, how does this work? Yeah. Um, you know what I say about that is that you should really ask Elliot. <laughs> 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 she threw it. See that? That's what bosses do. They push to the other side. He's an incredible storyteller, and he's also freer with like personal details and things like that. I myself, I just want to say that um, it's nice to be married. There it is. That's it. This is Daniel Smith. I'm Jeremy Hassel. We're some grown ass kids. Thank you so much. Revive. <laughs>